Welcome back. Today we're going to continue our playthrough of Human Resource Machine. Um, assuming the game continues. Uh, let's try that again. Ah. Alright, let's pick this player. Uh, so last we left off, uh, we've completed quite a few of these challenges. Uh, I remember when I first started, when we were looking at the first few levels, I thought you had to write programs that could fulfill both the stepwise and program size-wise requirements. Um, turns out you can actually write separate programs to fulfill each uh, objective, as long as you write at least one that satisfies each, uh, each respective light goes uh, gets lit. Uh, welcome back. So, yeah. Where do we want to go next? Oh, and for those unfamiliar with this series, uh, I have played this a few times before. You can feel free to check out all the videos on demand. Um, and uh, what makes this unique is that I do programming um, on a day-to-day -day basis. So, uh, to make this challenging at all, I decided to play it in German. Yeah, should, okay. So you're saying we should try to like turn on all the lights. So let's go back to 20 here. Multiplications workshop. All right, I have since completely forgotten what this is about. Probably about multiplying stuff. For each two things in the inbox, multiply uh, the, the, and um, read the, the, the thing in the outbox. Um, I mean, it's probably telling me just take the two things, multiply them together, and put the result out here. And to confirm said suspicion, let's just take a number from the inbox, drop it in the outbox, and see what he does. Oh! Should have gotten 6 times 2 is 12. Instead, we gave him a 6. Alright. But yeah, the level, or the whatever this puzzle name, level name thing is, is kind of a big hint. Um, Alright, so... Let's read from the inbox, copy it there, read from the inbox again, copy it here, and now figure out how to do the multiplication routine. Oh, so if we're zero, okay, let's put this here, put that there. And start the program with the jump that skips all the outbox steps. So if we hit zero, um, here, let's also copy this to slot one. Um, so each time I'm going to take the multiplication result and put that in slot, I don't even know which, let's say slot one. One's going to be the product. The, uh, I forget the two terms for multiplicand and multiplier or whatever, but yeah, let's take each of these um, as the two things to be multiplied, and then uh, one will be the result. So when we're done, we're going to copy from one and put it in the outbox. Um, but yeah, if we don't have um let's see oh that's interesting yeah so i actually want to bump first jump if zero dot dot, dot. do some multiplication and then jump back up here um so uh multiplication would be we're going to read the value in zero, add it to one, store it in one, and there we go, that's multiplication. So seven, seven, put our four down here, 
And then four times, we're going to take this seven and add it onto that seven. So you get the basic idea of how multiplication works. And then we take that value, throw it in the out box, and we're good to go. Um, so yeah, that's the basic concept of multiplication. Oh, I might have hit a... <laughs> might have slipped up there. Um, all right. Yeah, if we're zero, um, if the number we got out of the inbox is zero, uh, just put it in the outbox. So six times zero is zero. Success. Nice. Oops. All right, so we took more steps than we needed to. Um, okay, so I get the sense. Hmm. I'm not sure what to say there. I want to find some other shortcut in this algorithm. Anyway, um, I mean, we could say if... No, we can't. Um, copy to one. And if the number we've copied... is zero, then just go to the outbox. But now we're up to 16 instructions. I wanted to have one program that would satisfy both goals. And unfortunately this is 16 instructions, which is one more than I want. Hopefully this satisfies the step goal. No, it doesn't. It's still way off. Well, damn. Um... Hmm, how could I improve on this? I mean, it's still going to take 120 whatever steps. So I'm curious, what could I do to make this more efficient? Obviously if I had a multiply instruction that would help quite a bit. I don't have one of those. Um, I'm trying to remember, is there a more efficient means of multiplication? Hmm. I mean, ultimately, what you could do, you could do is take the two numbers, sort them, and then loop accordingly. Um, let's take a number. Whoops! Take a number from the inbox. Copy it to zero. Take a number from the inbox. Um, I don't want to copy it to one. I want to actually subtract zero. And um, for negative, well, the whole sorting thing takes a ton of instructions. Um, it could save quite a bit of looping, but yeah, in terms of instructions, this is going to take a lot. Um, here, let's save my sanity here. Copy the two numbers to slots 0 and 1. 
And then once I've got the numbers copied, then do the subtraction of zero um, for negative. We're going to jump somewhere else. We're going to copy. Actually, if we're negative, just leave the numbers alone. Else, do a swap routine. Um, where, how do we swap the two? Um, oops, here, let's see. Okay, else we're going to add zero, save that in zero, and then copy from and whatever. There's got to be a cleaner way to do all this. Um, subtract zero to figure out which one of these is larger. I wonder how you do this in assembly. Looking up how to do this in assembly would be kind of cheating, but it seems like that would be a good way to approach this, actually. Here, let's copy this all over the place, and then worry about minifying the code later. Alright. Um... Yeah, uh, multiply. Well, yeah, no, I'm saying in a language where you don't have... In some kind of assembly where you lack that instruction. Um, that'd be a fun way to do it. Let's just look at what gets produced if you're dealing with a particular architecture that lacks the multiplication instruction. Um, so... For a negative, we're going to do one thing. Oh man, I, I'm just not focusing very well at all. Yeah. The other thing that would be useful here would be a modulo operator. So if I know if a number is divisible by two or not, then I could uh, just add one of the multipliers by itself. Yeah, this whole thing of sorting is ending up being a total pain. And I'm being not very efficient at it. Here, let's just do the brute force sorting stuff. Um, so we're going to copy this to 5, copy this to 6. And then if we find out that we're negative... Then we're going to, for positive, we're going to add zero and take one, copy it to five. And then we're going to copy from zero to six. Either way, now we've got the numbers in sorted order there. So we got six, we've got four. Subtract, and since we're negative, we don't bother changing the ordering here. So the value in slot 6 is going to be the number of times to loop. Uh, eventually, this is going to print something to the outbox and then go back up to the top. So we're going to put that back to the top instruction here. Um, so each loop... We're going to copy from 5. Well, hang on. So we only want to loop if we have a positive number. Um, so we're going to copy, we're going to read the value out of 6. 
Um, wait, six is the lesser of the two integers. In either case, we have the value in memory already. Um, so we could save that read six for a later time. If we've got a zero in hand, we're going to jump way back up here, which is going to be just print to the outbox. Uh, so the start of the program is going to jump past print to the outbox. Um, else, we're going to bump six, read the value in five. Um, well, this is a mess. Um, I forgot that I'm going to need a register for adding stuff. Um, hmm. <laughs> it's going to copy this from nine into four. And then every time we print something to the outbox, it's going to be the value from four. Again, this is going way over the 15 instruction limit, but hopefully it'll do less looping. Um, so we're going to decrement 6, copy from 5, add it to 4, save it in 4, and then jump back to our loop here. Um, or maybe even there. No, not there. Not there. Maybe here. Uh, what a mess. Okay, and then this is going to jump us back up to the this stuff if we run out of loops. Oops. Well, that's a off by one error right there. Um, so here's how you fix your off by one error. You change your condition. Uh, there you go. A jump of zero is now a jump of negative. This goes way over the 15 instruction limit but it does much less looping because we ordered the numbers prior to doing the multiplication step. I'm curious if you could write one program that satisfies both constraints. Oh look! That even took longer. Uh, so that's no good. I said I could minify this, but it's really not looking good. Like seriously not looking good here. Um, anybody know any more efficient ways to multiply numbers? I thought this was really good. Because we take the uh, larger of the two numbers and that's what's used to know um, how many times to multiply. But apparently that's quite a bit. Let's put them in 0, 1, and 5. Bump minus 5 and add 0 to 1. Jump if 5 negative to output. Um, let's see. Put the values in 0, 1, and 5. Use 5 as my loop counter. Add 0 to 1. Um, I mean, we, we could try that. Obviously, what I've got here sucks. Um, here's the first implementation. <laughs> I did it all with negative numbers, just to be fancy, apparently.
Oh, well, that took 164 steps. Um, but, yeah, let's go back to program 3 and just scrap this, because it's nowhere near what we need. I'm sorry, we're going to have to scrap this. Oh, nine, 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 nine. All right, there's a neat jump over a jump. Y yeah. Is it okay if I scrap this and if we start anew? Just to try to implement your idea, because I'm sure what I'm doing here is insanely inefficient. I think I kind of get the gist of what you're saying. Unless there's some trickiness here. Wait, why do I have two jumps? I mean, obviously this one doesn't do anything, but... Um... I kind of get that you might not necessarily need to order the two numbers, and you could see, like, if you've added a number to itself and you end up getting zero, um, it's pretty clear what you're doing. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna scrap this. Um, okay, so we're gonna copy the zero, put it into slot four, then read the two numbers, uh, read it, Copy it, read it uh, from the inbox, copy it to five, and then we've got the number from five in hand. Um, let's put this back up here, uh, which is going to be copy from four to the out box. We're going to start this by jumping over that. So if we got a zero here, then we're going to jump up here. That might even not, not be the best way to do it. Um, well, I don't know. So now we're going to have our loop. Um, it's going to be copy from zero, add it to four, copy it into four, and then I think here is where we could have something fancy saying if we're zero, just jump up and put that in the out box. Um, else jump back, well, else we need to decrement five and then jump to our jump. Something like this. Wait, is this the only condition where we're jumping back up? If we jump of zero is also... Oh, it's going to put us here. Never mind. Um, I think we're okay. So this is going to put a zero there just as a placeholder. So we got our eight or two, which says we're going to put 8 plus 0 over here, decrement this, it's not 0, so add another 8, and uh, decrement that, and then print out the 16. Huh, it occurs to me now that one thing I could have done um, could have been reading the value out of register 5 and decrementing it at the same time and having initially put the first value both into slots 0 and 4. Um,
Well, no, I can't put the first value into slot four if I'm going to be taking this shortcut. Um, yeah, and no, I think this is okay. But is there a better way? Right, and that signals to us to read that and print it out. <laughs> All right, how far off was I in terms of step count? Still off by a lot. Wow. Okay. Well, that's kind of a mess and a half. Um... Maybe my... I mean, how? We're doing four multiplications. I'm off by a lot. Copy from zero and four, copy to four. The more and more instructions I add, the more clever things I can do. Like, I could take the number, add it twice, um, and then go back and check, like, if I decrement the loop counter twice, do I end up with zero or a negative number, and depending on which I have, then so on and so forth, but... Um, there's got to be a better way. What happens if instead of loading from 9 to 4 here, if I copy the first number to 0 into 4, second number to 5, if I have 0, just print the 0 as a second number, I think, yeah, here's a 15 step program that hopefully, no. Okay, I'm off by 1. Oh, right. I remember why I'm off by one. Um, it's because this needs to go here. Uh, shoot, 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 shoot. This could be a jump if negative to replace my whole jump if... Um... Hey. Well, that's a mess. Yeah, I can't exactly do the bump before the loop. Um, a jump if negative could let me execute an additional instruction somewhere. Um... How do I get from a negative number to a zero? I'd have to like add in some extra instructions or something. I mean, the negative possibility would be so unlikely that it's um, that whatever I choose to throw in there is not a big deal. Hang on, that's not where I wanted to put it. I want to put it here and say yeah if we end up with the negative number copy from nine oh and then jump down here that's okay and that way do, do, do. 
Actually, wait. Okay, I think I see the cleverness that can be done. Before this bump instruction, if we have a zero, then we just print it. All right, so we're back to 16 step, or instructions. Let's see how this does. Is this valid multiplication? If this is valid, then we'll worry about tuning for performance. It's valid. We got 16 instructions and 126 steps. We're getting there. We're getting close. Um, I think this jump of zero is pretty gratuitous. It doesn't really help very much. Yeah, okay. I understand what a jump of zero does. That's just an extra check that was being done every loop that didn't need to be done in most cases. Alright, so hopefully we're doing better than 126. Hundred thirty six. So that extra jump of zero is actually useful. Um <laughs> Maybe I could unroll the jump of zero. Woo, that's fun. Um, so we could read the value of this, and if we have a zero, jump to the same spot. In most cases, that doesn't matter. Seventeen instructions, 117 steps. I'm not sure if we're getting closer. The numbers say that we are, but the numbers could be lying. Um, this might be the time for me to um, do that more efficient double add thing I was talking about. Where you could reduce the number of loops but increase the number of comparisons. Um, what's really sucking here is like the 8 times 9 where you have to go around a lot. And I'm not seeing a way around that. I'm trying to think of some properties of numbers, like if I could take the two numbers, add them together, take the two numbers, take the difference, and somehow do some quadratic math to get a product. Um, that would be cool. It's probably nothing that crazy. Again, I'm tempted to just pre-fill, well, hang on. So, 
Another thing I could do. Um, stuff like this. And then I could move. Let's see. Add another jump here to skip over the copy from 4 instruction. Just, yeah. Um, and that way we don't need to have this extra copy from. We don't need to read twice. We could just read this. Um, in the case where we need to consume an extra input, consume it that way. Still, that. What's killing this is the number of times that you have to add numbers to themselves. guys all right um i actually feel that i am getting close but that just might be the music talking <sighs> okay so step one is jump over all this stuff at the beginning of the program um <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's some way I could take the stuff at the beginning and move it to the very end. Like, is there a routine that I could somehow reduce the number of jumps? Even removing a single jump could be the difference here. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Whew. Let's take another look at that. There is one really tricky thing I could do. Um, and that's that I could maintain two counters, um, and then check out um, when my counter has reached half of the limit. And as I've reached half of the limit, um, then I just add the number to itself to perform the final step. Um, so that would cut out half the loops in some cases. Um, which could save quite a few steps, honestly, but um, I'm not sure if overall it would save steps. Yeah, like that whole 9 times 8 thing, you could um, add 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8, and then determine how many 8s you have left to add, and, you know, fun stuff. Um, huh. There might also be a way to do this... Um, where you're not decrementing or incrementing by one, but you're changing, um, you're doing a really binary multiplication operation. That might be doable. That would certainly send the number of uh, steps through the roof, but our number of instructions would be astronomical um, like if I were to take the two numbers put them in these registers and um, then use a binary counter that just counts a lot faster
Like here we've got eight and nine. So if I had a counter that went one, two, four, eight down here, and we're adding this number to itself up here and figuring out where we are, that could be pretty cool. Of course, um, that would be incredibly complicated, but that would save half the loops at least. That would be a real multiplication instruction. Um, in fact, I think that's how an ALU, an arithmetic logic unit, might implement multiplication. <sighs> so do I feel like writing an ALU here, or can I find a way to just eliminate one instruction somehow? That's the question. I mean, if I could even remove a single instruction, this would be awesome, but that might not be doable. The other thing is there might be some way that I could like read this one of these numbers from the inbox, negate it, and then um, only jump if positive or jump if negative or something. There might be a clever way I could perform a fall through um, condition in order to save an instruction somewhere. But I doubt it. There's surely a cleaner way to do what I'm already doing. Oh, hang on. So one dumb thing is that if we've already read a zero here, just jump. Uh, likewise, if we've read a zero here, just jump. That might save enough that we don't need to do any crazy binary counter sorts of nonsense. Probably not, but it might. Let's see, how are we doing? Nineteen? Hundred eleven. <sighs> not fair. So not fair. All right. Um, what have I missed? What have I missed? There's got to be some stupid nonsense here where I'm just initializing things wrong and I'm doing more steps than I need to be doing. There's no way they would expect any player of this game to do the full binary counter stuff to actually imp implement an ALU. I mean, that's beyond what they would expect of a casual gamer. So... Um... <laughs> Jump if zero, copy to five. See, what I'm thinking is, can I move some of this around? Um, like, can I take this bump minus five, put it below all of this? This is here. I can move it down here. Take that, put it here. And then we do all that copy from add copy to bump minus five but now i don't have the number in my hand that i want but wait why am i doing the copy from four there 
Let's go back. Go back. Oh, goodness. Copy to four, and then copy from four into outbox. Um. I'm confused. Man, I miss being able to do some really powerful um, instructions where you're doing like memory read add and indirection and stuff. You can't do that indirection with these instructions. Um, and actually, this is correct as it stands, because we have to decrement to see, like, assume we had, like, an 8 and a 1 there. Uh, when we decrement the 1... We still need to have the 8 appear in the outbox. Um, oh wait, now if I take these two... Yeah, here we go. Like I was trying to do a second ago, I was wondering, can I move this around? Um, and if I can, then maybe I could skip a step during initialization. So I don't need to copy this both to 0 and to 4. So we're taking 0, adding it to 4, but now we don't have anything in memory slot 4. Um, that seems to be a bit of a problem. So maybe I still do need this, but what am I doing now? If I'm doing it that way, then I have to add the check up here. Well, okay, so the other thing I could do is restructure this. Um, redefine how I'm using 0, 5, and 4. Um... Like, I could put five... Oops, hang on, hang on, before I lose my mind. Um... I could swap how I'm using these. So I could put the zero where this was, the five where that was. I'm not sure if that gains me anything. I'm trying to think. There's some benefit to reorganizing this somehow. I had it in my head a second ago, and I already forgot it. Um, oh, right. So I'm trying to say I could take two instructions and swap them with one instruction. So I could take the 0 and the 4 and put them down here. So that if I read a zero in either of these instances, I'm okay. Um, I might have to switch all my fives and zeros and fours here as well. But my main point is that... Um, actually, no, I think this should be fine. Let's give it a shot. There's 12... Yeah, 8 times 9 is 72. So that way I get a short circuit evaluation when either operand is 0, or either multiplicand is 0. Nope, that's slower. I don't understand how, but uh, evidently that is slower. I think it's just luck based on what the numbers were that one of them ended up being slower than the other. Uh, 
I'm not sure if he says anything about the ordering of the multiplicans either. Um, and I don't think there is actually luck in this game, but I'm just saying in terms of... Um, uh, I'm not sure how to explain it. Like, here, I don't think it says, like, which number is larger. In fact, here you see 4 is greater than 3, but 9 is greater than 8, and, you know. Um... Copy to five. Decrement five. If we're a zero, then take the value that's in register whatever and print it. Maybe if I rearrange the top half of this. Um, so we have more efficient short circuit evaluation. Maybe that'd be a good thing, but anyway, I think I'm very close, um, and I'm at great risk of breaking things if I start moving everything around under this program slot. So it might be a good idea if I just uh, open a different program slot and just left this as a backup program in case uh, it proves to be of some value. Because I'm not seeing a simple way to eliminate an entire instruction. Obviously, if either number we read was zero, then we just print out a zero. There's nothing clever about that. So when we say jump of zero, this consumes an extra input. Um, and then... Um, yeah, I'm uh, not sure what to say about that, but yeah, having consumed the extra input, um, mm -hmm. there's probably a better way to even write this consumption of inputs. Like, to check, to read one value, store it, read the other value, check if it's zero, store it, then go back and check the first value and see whatever it is, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, I'm gonna lose my mind trying to optimize this, so I think I'll leave this be and try to move on to a different puzzle and come back to this when I'm more up to the challenge. Um, should we try a different one? This one's, we got a couple of them are blinking at us. I think the ones on the left side of the path are, intend to be much more challenging. And, um, so I'm gonna take the one on the right. Duplicativerning thing. Um, the thing are the thing, I don't know. Ha. Huh? Kleiner little, I assume this means like, haha, little joke or something. Um, I have, or something, I have something one night, something, something, I don't know. I don't know, German. Sorry. Sounds like he's having fun, though. That's what matters. Read the things in the inbox into the outbox and the having something where Zufor whatever duplicate. Okay. Simple program. Inbox, outbox, there we go. C E ah 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 D ah uh, ah. Uh. I assume we, what he wants is just don't print out duplicate letters. Okay, yeah. So, um, 
All right, we're going to copy this to the address indicated by 14, uh, not 14. Um, so first we're going to copy from 14 into 13. And copy to, oh, hang on. Then each time we read something from the inbox, it's got to go somewhere. Um, wow, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so we're going to have actually two counters. Counters in slots 13 and 12. Uh, read from the inbox. Copy it to the address indicated by memory slot 13. And then um, we're going to, I guess, increment. Well, actually, no. Hang on. I want to save slot 0 for the input that we just read. <sighs> what a dilemma. What a dilemma. So we're gonna... Oh, actually, I don't need anything special for that, do I? Whatever. Um... Hmm. This is tricky. All right, we're going to increment the 14 to make it a 1. Um, copy the 1 into 13 and 12. Uh, read from the inbox. Copy it into 0. Um, and then we're going to read 12. Um, yeah, actually, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, man, what a mess. <laughs> Copy from 12, um, and then subtract the value of 13. Or maybe I want to do this the other way. Either way, I'm going to have a couple counters going. And if we've hit zero... Oh, man. If 12 and 13 are the same value... It's too bad I can't do a single instruction and then jump. That might help a lot. If they're the same, then we're going to copy from zero into the address indicated by... Um, 13, print it in the out box, and then jump way back up to the top of the program. We're going to increment the count. 
Maybe I don't need to have this many counters. Um, in fact, I definitely don't. Um, let's copy from 14, subtract 13. Um, so, if we're not zero, we're going to have to go back up here. Um, I think I've got that backwards. We're going to always want to be sub doing a comparison between 13 and 14 to see if the indices are the same. If the indices are in fact the same and we've not hit a collision yet, uh, then we're going to jump over all this comparison stuff I'm about to write. Else, um, we're going to read the value. Wait, I don't have a value in each one of these slots. Um, ay ay ay. Okay, supposing I do have a letter in each slot, I'm going to copy from zero, subtract the value that's in memory address 13, and if they're equal, then just move on to the next thing. Um, else continue looping, uh, bumping the value of 13. Oh, hang on, hang on. I don't need to do an index comparison. Okay, I made this way too complicated. We're going to clean this up. Sorry. Um, bump the value of 14. Copy it into 13. And then um, we're going to increment backwards through the letters that are here. Um... So each time we're going to read from the inbox, copy it into slot 0, and then read the value that's in 13. Uh, but also while we're reading it, decrement it. So, and then if we've hit 0 and we haven't found a match, skip over all the comparison stuff and read the value as zero and put it in the outbox. Else do all our comparison stuff here. Uh, if there's no match, however, then we also want to copy it into the address specified by 14 put it in the outbox, and then increment 14 again. So here is where we're going to have to write our uh, character comparison, which is going to be us um, reading um, thing indicated by 13. And I guess reading the thing indicated. Oh, hang on. When I read the thing indicated by address. Uh, address 13. And then, yeah, subtract. Oh, we could actually do this either way. Um, I wasn't sure if the subtract operation had indirection or not. Alright, and if we have a match, if 
these two characters are equal, uh, then go back up here. I think this will work. Now, there might be a better way to write it. So we got a C. Read this. Take our C, stick it in slot one. And now there's one letter in memory. So one says that we're going to compare index zero to one. We have a match. So we move on to the next letter. Okay, let's decrement that. Compare the zero to that slot. Print it out, etc., etc. Um, compare C and E. Those aren't the same letter. Store the E. Now we have a counter there that starts at three. Compare the C to the E. Not a match. Oh dear. That's no good. Not a match. So. Um, yeah, so if we have not a match, we need to jump somewhere. I think here. Let's try that again. C, B. C, B, A. Cool. Well, we solved the puzzle. How good do we do? Oh, two fewer instructions and a lot more steps than expected. So, the challenge is, is there a more efficient way to write this uh, than what I did? And the answer is obviously yes, because otherwise, um, yeah. So, uh, what's the right way to do it? Maybe I use uh, zero indexing instead of one indexing or something. Um, well, step <laughs> at the very beginning, we're going to read from the inbox, copy it to one, read it into the outbox, and then increment this value. That's pretty easy. Um, and copy that to slot 13. After that, it gets a little bit more challenging. But, yeah, it's pretty clear we can bootstrap the program like that. Um, which is ridiculous and probably unwarranted. Uh, Yeah, thereafter, we're going to read something from the inbox, uh, copy it into slot zero, and I don't know. Yeah, obviously the bootstrapping of it's ridiculous. Um, why is this so challenging?
I oh, mean, I kind of wish I just had like a letter A in slot 13. And then I could use some kind of hash encoding to figure out like what memory address do I want to stick each letter at. And then figure out is that slot occupied or not. And if it's not, then just print out the letter. I get the sense that that's not what the program, what, not what the game expects you to do. And consequently doesn't give you a letter A over here. But, man, that'd be cool. I mean, actually, given the domain of the input characters, I could just, say, stick the first letter in slot 7, and then do an offset to figure out where to put the remaining letters, and with respect to the first character. Um, and probably not encounter a segmentation fault. But... Yeah, there's no way to check if a memory slot is occupied, is the problem. There's always a catch. Okay, let's clean this up. Oh, actually... Yeah, maybe bootstrapping this is okay. Copy it to zero. <laughs> uh, put it into the outbox. Read the next thing from the inbox. Um, subtract the value that's in zero. If we have a match, just go back. Um, else, add the value of zero. Subtract the value of 1 and so forth. Um, so this is... This is disgusting. But it'll work. Uh, copy from 14 into 13 and 12. So 14 is just going to be my eternal 0. 13 is going to be my count of letters. Um, 12 is going to be an actual counter. Actually, 12 could be a count of letters. Um, then each time we read a letter, we're going to copy from 14 to 13. Actually, why am I counting this way? This is the most terrible way to count. Um, yeah, now let 14 be the number of things that I have. Um, which we know is always going to have at least one. So we're going to increment that copy it over to 13 do this operation um, in fact each time we write to the outbox we're gonna do this okay um, this is starting to look awfully a lot like my other program Okay, subtract zero. It's not exactly what I want to do. I want to subtract the thing that's referenced by memory address 13. And um, otherwise add that. Um, oh, shoot. Shoot, shoot. I can't be messing with my counter this way. Um, yeah, this is, the problem here is that now that I've got the letter in hand, I can't increment the value in register 13 unless I put the letter somewhere. Um, 
which is why I need to do one indexing instead of zero indexing. So my first thing I read is gonna go to address one. We're gonna bump 14 to say that we've got something in address one. But yeah, when we read something in the inbox, we have to put it somewhere. Um, and then subtract that <laughs> if we ended up with the same letter jump up there um if we if the memory value of 13 is equal to zero then jump again oh man what a mess Yeah, that's not going to work, is it? It's not very generic. It's pretty disgusting. Um, and there's no jump if positive instruction. There's no way to negate a memory address. Um, horrifying a thought as that is. Okay, so this idea of bootstrapping stuff is disgusting and complicating everything. Um, okay, so we're actually going to read this, and if the value of that is zero, then we're going to um, copy from address zero um this also isn't gonna work i've sufficiently complicated this to the point where optimizing it is a mess let's try this again um so first increment 14 copy it into 13 that's going to be our counter then we're going to read from the inbox, copy it into zero. Um, decrement 13. And this is going to look exactly the same as my other program, I'm sure, when I finish writing it. Um, Copy to zero. Um, compare this with the value referenced by 13. But no, first we need to check is 13 zero. Um, <laughs> yeah, so check. Is the value of 13 equal to 0? And if so, um, read from memory address 0, copy it into memory address 14, copy it into the outbox, increment 14. Um, Let's see. Oops, that's not going to work. I forgot I need to jump at the start of the program uh, to here. So initialize this 14 and 13. Take the value out of the inbox, put it into zero. Read that. Oh. 
Um, if this is not zero, then we need to do some stuff. Actually, this should be a bump minus instruction. Uh, right, so this is correct. If we hit zero, then we're going to do that printing stuff that we are just talking about. Otherwise, we need to compare the value of zero to the value referenced by memory address 13. If that, if those values are equal, then reset everything. Else jump back to the loop like this. Wow, this seems way simpler than what I did the first time. Is this not the same exact program though? I mean, this has got to be the same thing I wrote the first time, right? This is 15 instructions. 15 steps, 188... Wait, 15 instructions, 188 steps. What did I write the first time? The thing I wrote the first time is also 15. I think it also took 188. Unless I'm forgetting something, but... Um... I think some of that varies with the inputs they select, but you can't get a perfect score unless you happen to satisfy the constraints. So for zero we jump way up here, we just repeat the loop. Oh, so the objective of this program, as it clearly spells out, is no, just take the characters from the input queue and print out the ones uh, that aren't duplicated. It's like you take the D, print out D, take the C, print out C, E, E, read this D, note that you've already printed a D so you don't bother printing that. And so you just keep going down this chain and only print out the letters you haven't already printed. Um, so just demonstrating that in action. Read this letter, and observe that it's unique, so I'm going to copy it to our alphabet of letters, and then take the next letter, and so on and so forth. So C and D are not the same letter, so put the C over there, print that out. It's possible I might be complicating my life by keeping only a list of unique letters. Um, maybe it's easier to just always read the character and then scan the entire memory to see if you've encountered a duplicate. Um, I'm not sure. But yeah, you see, like, each time I'm reading a letter, I'm comparing it to every letter that I've already read. And if I encounter a match, then just discard it and go on to the next one.
Hmm. There might be some marginal utility in checking is the letter I'm reading the same as the one I just read. That could skip um, using the index for a step. I'm not sure what else you'd do. I still think it'd be hilarious, though, if you could make a hash function uh, based on what the letters are and know where to look inside memory and um, check if the memory address is occupied or not. Um, kind of think that would be cheating, but it'd be pretty funny if you could find a way to make that work. Yeah, also in terms of making these programs super efficient, it's actually quite complicated. Like, I'm sure there's a way to, instead of keeping track of two numbers as indices here, I, I'm sure, like, as you're adding on letters, you could add them to the beginning or end of the queue based on where they are alphabetically with respect to the other letters you've read. Um... I'm sure that'd be another strategy for trying to improve performance. Um, so I don't know. Okay, so I'll put it this way. In high school, I studied a little bit of Latin. Um, so wherever a German word looks like a Latin word that I know, um, to that extent, I understand German. Um, but usually it's me just looking at, um, let's go on to a different problem. Usually I just look at, uh, I take the numbers or letters or whatever are in the input queue, put them in the output queue and just see what happens and how he complains. Yes, uh, something, something, zug, egg. Uh, da, 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 da. Information, I guess. Um, the... I don't know. The arbitrator of the night is coming. That's not what it says at all. Um, something... I assume par is pair. Of something something is the thing. Daten der artiste eins an der par is... Okay, sure. I know the, the, the thing in the inbox, something, something, the pair, um, something, something, I mean, Legan, uh, I think means to read, um, these pairs and for all something pairs in the something in the outbox, something, something, I don't know. Okay, we're going to. Read the thing, print it out, see what he says. Yes. We have to make this interesting somehow, right? Alright, so E, but you printed out zero, which is not an E. Okay. Got it. Let's go back. Um. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. So he was expecting E, and I printed out zero. Okay. Sure. Inbox. Um, we're going to read the value. Oh, that's not even going to work. Um, okay, we have to copy this value into slot two, or slot seven, or somewhere. Somewhere where I can keep track of it. And then we're going to read the value based on that memory address. And then that's what we're going to print. So zero. Just read the E, print out the E, because that's what he wanted. Oh, that's not it. Okay, he wants nine things, not one. Okay. 
Oh, wait, is he saying that he wants, like... I'm confused. He wanted nine letters. Why would he want nine letters? Certainly he's not asking for nine E's, because there's a 13 next to the E. Um... Wants you to print from box N, then read M plus one. Oh, well, that's cheating. But yeah, <laughs> just kidding. No, you're you're probably right. Um. All right. Yeah, we can do that. No big deal. Inbox. Copy it to seven. Read from address seven. Copy it to the outbox. Increment seven. Uh, um, then we're going to read the value that's indicated by seven. No, nah, I don't care. I'm sure this would have been frustrating and taken me forever, but no, you're probably right. Um, I think I would have gotten it. It just would have taken a while longer. It would have been less entertaining for all of us. Um, so now I get to focus on the puzzle part of this. <laughs> no, I don't care. Uh, so if we're negative, then just go back up here. Else, go there. Bam. A P E E S C A P E Okay, got it. Ape Escape. Hey, perfect score. Not bad. <laughs> All right. Recoordinator. Bauer Alf B6. Shock Mot. Ooh, Shock Mot! I can guess what that means. You sunk my battleship. Oh! Ho, 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 ho. All right, I don't know. For something in the inbox, something, something, something. The address 6 had something, something, 2, 1. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Yeah. There's something in the inbox. The address, something, often Bowden. Read the coordinates there. Kasha in the inbox. Um, there's the about the, the okay first the something then the something the address six has something the coordinates two comma one to column two row one uh, something something okay um, well, let's do the naive thing again. See what he does. There's a zero. It's not what he wanted. He wants eight objects, not one. Now he's so picky. What if I do it this way? Does he still want eight objects? Okay, he wanted a two, but I gave him a 14. Oh, two would be the column of 14. Interesting. All right, so the first time, yeah, I think my first number was a zero. I gave him a zero and he said he wanted more. Okay. Um, oh, I see, this is why I have the zero and the four. So basically take the number, get the modulo four, print that out, Take the number, get um, the number of times 4 divides into that, and print that out. 
Um, yeah, that's probably it. He probably wants the row in the column. So like for this two, I'm sure he wants like two comma zero. Okay, so read the number, uh, copy it into address zero. Um, also copy it into address one. No, we don't need to copy it in two places. Um, actually, we need to have a zero. So we're going to need to copy from 14 into zero. Take the input, copy it into one. Subtract four. And if we're negative, um... Jump over the thing. Actually, for negative or zero, go one way. Man, that's annoying. Well, I guess, yeah, jump if negative. Also, for positive or zero, go back up here. Um. Right. If we're positive or zero, copy the number back, the remainder, into one. Increment the value of zero. Jump back up here. Subtract four, etc., etc. If we finally hit the negative condition, uh, then our row is, well, yeah, then we want to um, copy from one to the outbox, copy from zero to the outbox. And then loop somewhere uh, to the top. There we go. Perfect. Oh, I goofed. Oh, I so goofed. How did I goof that? I'm confused. Let's... Oh, I should have stepped backward. My bad. Alright, let's see what we do with the 9. Yeah, so the deal here is that I'm just falling through. I forgot I have to have a loop here somewhere. It says to go somewhere, but where? Uh, back up here. Um... Wait, what? That doesn't help me at all. It's right, so a subtract 15. So keep subtracting 4, and if we're negative, jump down there. How is this incorrect? Probably trivially so. I'm missing something really stupid here. Let's watch this in action. So we got a zero there. Stick our 11 in slot one, subtract the four from 11. Put this there, increment that. Oh, that's what we're missing. That after we increment that, then we have to read the value out of slot one again. That was dumb. Told you I was missing something dumb. <gasps> no! That's one extra instruction. Oh man. Well that will not stand. That will very much not stand. What do we do guys? Okay, I'm curious, just because there's so many ones out here, um, in terms of performance, how badly do I suck on that? Six 
Because, I mean, yeah, obviously I have more steps, more instructions than needed, but the number of steps is still off by four. Okay. So I still got one extra step here. Uh, it's probably this copy from one, copy from one, or something. Um... Copy to one, subtract four. If we're negative, jump to over this. Else, copy to one, increment address zero, copy from one. And then jump back up here. Oh, um, you know, I'm assuming that the reason this is all the graphics here are like, well, I was going to say because the artwork, um, but no, I'm not sure. Like, obviously, the puzzle instructions are given in German. Um, one thing you will see about um, software in general, the source code, is that it's almost always in English. If there's a project that ever crosses um, between countries, usually they will share source code in English. Um, so it's very common to see source code in English, even if people speak um, Spanish or German or French or whatever, they will write code in English. Just because it's a predominant language. Who knows how long that'll remain the case, but it seems to be the convention of this time and age. confused. This program looks very... I want to say optimal. How could I have missed the mark on this? I am so stumped. Well, maybe. Maybe this jump instruction is something that can move. Like, here we say jump if negative. Um, I could take this block of five lines and put that at the start of the program. Uh, with the caveat that, of course, I'd have to jump over these four, and then I wouldn't need this bottom jump anymore. Um... There's probably a way I can remove a jump instruction if I restructure my code. There almost always is a way. Is the copy from 14 to 0? No, this 
I think this is necessary because this will count the number of times um, that 4 divides into the number. It's going to be our address 0. In fact, I think I can write out special labels and such. Um, so... Um, uh, I'm trying to remember what you call this. I'm going to say... Uh, dividend. Um, and then call this remainder. Well, that's clunky. That might help make more sense of what's going on here. Well, I think removing a line could address the entire performance issue that I'm encountering. I can even add a caption down here. Four. Well, that's disgusting. <laughs> Does that make it any easier or more challenging to read? <laughs> Probably more challenging. Um, we gotta try something different once in a while there. I know that's causing me all kinds of pain reading that, but maybe it helps you guys. An extra four steps in my code. Yeah, exactly. It's got to be one time per iteration that I have a single extra instruction somewhere. Um, but where? Where is the question? The thing here, it's possible that line number four here, where I'm taking the value and immediately putting it into memory, that might be the wasted instruction. There might be some way to do this without having to subtract at all. I don't know. Or this whole copy from remainder, copy from remainder thing could be redundant. Um, that's probably it. What we're going to try doing is copy this program, go to slot 2, paste this program, and then try doing some fun math stuff here. Uh, so for negative, copy to remainder. Increment dividend, copy from remainder. See, here's the deal. If we subtracted 4 and we got a negative number, all we need to do to get our original number back is just add 4. Um, but, hmm, this is where it gets messy. So here's where we're reading out of the remainder field. It might be possible to move and or eliminate that instruction. Uh, would it run properly if I removed line 4? I mean, there's ways to... F yeah, actually, that's where I was trying to go with this next. So now we subtract 4. Copy it to remainder. In fact, that's why I put the add for down here. Um, this might be what we're looking for. I say for instead of for, so just it's clear that I'm making a distinction between the integer for and looking for something. 
Yeah, it looks like if since I added changed that line, what was line eleven now is line ten. I'm saying add four. Or that used to say just get the value out of memory address one, the remainder. Um, now that line uh, that you were mentioning is no longer necessary. However, we still use it in this case, where we end up with a number, an integer that exceeds 4, or is equal to 4. Then the memory value um, is used. Only because we can only hold a single integer in our hand at a time. So we, as we increment the dividend, we have to put what we're holding in our hand into the remainder value in memory. Uh, either way, yeah, I think this is excellent teamwork. That is a really good suggestion. And it kind of suggests that um, I found the one half of that, uh, which was changing the read from mem read from remainder field into the uh, just add four again. But I forgot that I was looking to try to remove that instruction up there. Um, I think what this means, um, oh man, we're so close to the next coffee break, and yet at the same time, um, I think it's probably just appropriate to take a coffee break. Yeah. I'm just saying, in general, I'm really scatterbrained here. Um, so it probably just makes sense for me to wrap up this game today. And if I feel like streaming a game, um, pick a different one. But we get to enjoy this beautiful cinematic. You're right, that is all on me. Aw, how pleasant. <gasps> no! Okay. I've not played that. In fact, I don't have that. I have so many other games I intend to get through that I've not um, picked that game up. Oh, Manufacturia. I was thinking of, like, other manufacturing games. I've never tried this Manufactoria. Um, but yeah, feel free to send me a message linking to that, and I'll take a look. Um, so, yeah, I think that wraps it up for uh, Human Resource Machine for today. These puzzles are getting more challenging step by step, um, but we're making good progress. Let's see, how many lights are we missing? So we got these two, we got all those, got all those. So the first one we're missing is on stage 20. So we're missing one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, got all those, amazingly. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and then eleven, twelve, and then whatever lies beyond this. Um, so yeah, we're we're doing really well. Um, granted, most of these puzzles have been particularly easy, but they're starting to ramp up. I've heard that the last sets of puzzles are just insane. So, it's probably good that while I'm just not entirely focused, that I uh, wrap this up here. And I um, hope you enjoyed. Hope this was in some way instructive. If, if not instructive, at least fun. Um,. And yeah, see you around. Have a good one. Take care. Auf Wiedersehen. Whatever you're supposed to say in German. It's been fun. I'll see you next time.